With so much making the round in the world of sports, it's time for another exciting package of Sportsville. My name is George Alua, bidding you welcome to the show. On today's program, we shall be looking at the continuous slide of Nigerian clubs in the continent, especially against the North Africans. We all saw the shambolic outing of the teams last weekend, where all our three representatives crumbled like a pack of cards. Talk about Plateau United, Rivers United, and Quara United not be able to, to make it into the group stage. What are the problems and the possible solutions? This will form the nucleus of today's show. Tony Bane and Frank Laboya have all taken their place in the studio. But first, let's leave you with a recap of the week in pictures. of this life-changing season of huge wins. Visit betway.com.ng correctly predicts the outcome on pick 8 with 25 Naira to win 500,000 Naira. Pick 13 with 50 Naira to win 14.3 million Naira. Or pick 17 with 100 Naira to win 850 million Naira. Play the Betway in a jackpot now. Betway.com.ng Terms and conditions supply. All right, welcome back. We'll go straight to the show now. And let me start by introducing my colleagues. Let me start from my immediate right, where Frank Laboya is seated. Frank, you're welcome to Sportsville. Thanks so much, George. Nice to be here again, of course. I hope that our viewers are enjoying the program on this wonderful, wonderful station. 
And uh, to my far right is uh, Tony Ubani. Tony, welcome to Sportsville. Thank you so much, uh, George. And of course, uh, welcome our esteemed viewers to Sportsville. All right, gentlemen, we saw what Ahmed Musa did within the week, opening up an international school in Jos, uh, giving back to the society. Frank, I think that's a lovely one coming from uh, Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa. I think we need to give to Ahmed Musa. He'll be doing well, apart from what he had just done in just now by opening an international school, named after his uh, parents. We consider that he'll be doing that, even with colleagues. I remember where he has to uplift uh, one of uh, the ex Super Eagles players with money. Kinsley Obieko. Fantastic. So much on uh, with uh, Ahmed Musa. I think we need to say kudos, kudos for showing a good example. Captain of Super Eagles, I think he's also doing very, very well. Very well. Uh, Tony, I think you agree with him. <laughs> yeah, George, absolutely. I think that Ahmed Musa has always been a pioneer once it comes to humanitarian services. And also, George, you look at it from football, it's also moving into basketball, you know, where uh, Masai, you know, has done wonderfully well, you know, just showing people the way to affect the society and impact that uh, humanity will benefit from, especially in basketball. He has unveiled uh, four basketball courts and he says that he will do that up to 100. George, I, I think uh, Nigerians are beginning to show love to themselves and uh, I think that also somehow it will affect our sports uh, positively. No, honestly, I agree with you, Tony, because if you go to Benin now, Julius Sagawa is also doing something. Of course, he's starting the football tournament between 27th and 29th of this month just to affect the youth, to bring the youth out of the slum, also make them superstar. He said he started from the slum, and that's the only way to go. I think uh, uh, players are beginning to get it right. You saw what Eto was doing in Cameroon. You saw what uh, uh, the drummer was doing in Cote d'Ivoire. I think our players are getting it right gradually. Uh, say so we're still celebrating in the studio because uh, the Super Flamingos, I want to put Super to their name, the Flamingos, they were fantastic, beating almighty United States of America. Nobody gave them a chance, but these little girls did it, and we saw the way they were celebrating and giving God all the praise. Frank, I think that was massive. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I'm uh, among the few Nigerians that, that didn't give them a chance. I must confess to them, but I think they did well. You know, I have to commend them. I think uh, to me, they just show resilience. They show that there's future in Nigerian football. They may not be good technically, but I think you could see that drive. That Who energy. said they were not good technically? No, 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 no. They may not, no compared to U.S. Let's get it clear. Compared to U.S., but I think, you know, we have to commend them for the drive, mm -hmm. for the energy, and uh, for, you know, for that determination. That's what give to us. I mean, in terms of technique, I think uh, we need to give to U.S. But today, we are celebrating because our guests have done us proud. But again, must commend them for that determination, that drive. That are what they that, were rugged. Very, very rugged. Nothing to take very, away from very, those very, girls. Very, very rugged. <laughs> I know you know when it comes to women's football, Tony is an expert. <laughs> no, George, I must say, you know, as in um, I remember Frank calling and then saying that uh, the girls, even before the game, that uh, you know, being so positive that the girls were going to get it. Not so many people were positive, but what really tickles me, excited me so much was that despite uh, the thunder and lightning, it could not stop the flamingos. So for me, you know, not just the day beat. So that's a lightly affected boat. Team. Yeah, not only did they, not only did they beat Almighty America, USA. but they also somehow, you know, could not be stopped by thunder and lightning. That to me is, uh, you know, the key, you know, to their success. And I don't think that there is any team that will stop them now that they have beaten Almighty America. That so many people predicted that they were the ones that are going to. But win don't, talking about thunder and lightning, what happened to the special sports? You know, they were all over the streets protesting. That they were excluded from uh, the uh, national sports festival. Yeah, it was a shocker. It was a shocker that um, you know that uh, they could just be excluded that way before they hurriedly you know gave out reasons. I, I think that uh, you know the special sports have been you know the kernel of Nigerian success, both at home and at international you know events, and should not be treated with levity. You know, despite the fact that uh, the ministry, you know, has just come out to say that uh, they did that because they have their own special sports festival. But I think Tony, don't forget that this special sport gave us medals. Frank, that's what I'm saying. It's they not enough. Us medals. I think whatever it done for them should not be too enough, not be too much in this country. Frank, I This has to be the pride of the nation, both at the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games. To me, I don't think there's any excuse that it's as big as, you know, excluding these people. They also need to feed, you know, and the only way to get money is through this competition. Or you wanted to go out begging. That's Despite their protests, uh, the, the Council of Sports have taken the decision that para sports will not be part of the sports festival. And like you guys said, the ministry has given its position that we have done so much. The Council Even of Sports, George, has to reconsider. They have you know? to reconsider. Yeah, they are Nigerians. Okay. We are all telling that they have to reconsider because okay. they are special to Nigeria. They are special to all of us. They have to reconsider.
Okay? All right, I hope you enjoyed the show. Let's take a break now with football where we'll bring you uh, all that happened to well, Rivers United and uh, Quara United. We were there to welcome them despite the fact that they failed to conquer in Africa. We were the only television station that was there to welcome them when they returned from the continent. We'll give you all that happened and how they felt when they returned from North Africa. We actually prepared well, you know, but uh, a lot of things happened, a lot of uncertainties, a lot of uh, difficulties before uh, on, the, on our journey to Morocco, you know, we went to Morocco and saw I made the worst, you know, before the game, even the, to warm up, nowhere to train, nowhere to warm up, you know, coming to the game proper, I believe that uh, before the warm up, uh, the one hour that was supposed to warm up, they never allowed us to make use of the pitch. Not even a training pitch. When we started, when we wanted to train on the pitch, they switch up the quite unfortunate. You know, we couldn't tune up at all. But in the match proper, I think we tried our best. We never went to defend like uh, so, many, so many people want to believe. There was no time we planned for a defensive game. You know, we came out to press. The only thing that we had a middle press, you know, to, to make sure that we also gathered our side. But, but you know, at the end, immediately the referee gave a record to the goalkeeper to reduce our our number but this one has given us a first hand you know uh, uh, awareness of what to expect in the next game yes it's a lesson and we have learned a lot, a lot and uh, i believe it's going to help us in the lower competition and uh, we the boys uh, we, we are not happy about it and uh, i think uh, I, as the captain of the team, I owe the country apology. We were hoping that we were going to do more than that and see how we get to the group stage. But we couldn't get it right. But we have put that behind us. But we're going to do, do ourselves proud and the entire country in the uh, next competition. When we went there, we, all what we saw was what we would normally expected. We know they would come with their aunties. They want to intimidate us with their fans, but this is not what we look out for. We prepared well for them, but I would say the, ant the referee's antics tell on us too. We've been there on occasions. This is calf tournament. This is not our first time. So for the crowd, it's not new to us, but for, we will say we've learned a lot from this experience. Uh, it's not really a good experience, but one thing with football, when you get such experiences, you just try to pick the positive from it. You know, it's something that have to really tackle because this is not fair. Even before we left, we knew that the Northern Africa, they always do something like this. So situations like this, you now get there and still get such experience. It's not really nice because it has been happening right from time until now. They've not really tackled that experience. It's not really good because they came to tackle. We gave them everything they wanted, but we got there. Oh, it's a better side, it's a big side. Why are you scared? Why are you not allowing us train? Allow us to play and allow the game flow. You get some antics from the home team and from the referees. It's not really nice. This is an opportunity for us to still beg our own people here to do something because since CAF is already hearing st such stuff and they are not doing anything, we should actually push for it and see whether something can actually change before it gets more worse than this. I've played against this same way that team before when I was in Lobby Stars. You know, some of the players, this is their first experience playing, and so it's you know, it's kind of different from when you're playing at home and all those things. It's a lesson for me and the rest of my teammates, so now we just have to go back and tidy some things where we know we did wrong. With the um, advice from the coaches and the encouragement, I know we're going to bounce back because it's football. Even the biggest teams in the world, they lose. Yeah, it is disappointing because uh, we, we, we wanted to bring uh, the group stage ticket back home. But, uh, you know, uh, the boys really did their best. Uh, we cannot give excuse, we just say that uh, we lost and uh, we learn from our loss and we we'll go back to the drawing board to see what we can do in the league and uh, preferably or shall I get uh, another ticket again for next season. I know the boys have led from this, uh, this uh, outing. We, we never expected this, you know, it was uh, hostile, you know, we get to the venue of where we're going to this, the city we're going to play around 4 a.m. in the morning. That's the eve of the match. So they, they do everything. And you can see in the field of play too, the referee was <laughs> like Nigerian referee. So 
But we, we try our best, you know, we try our best and God said this we're going to stop. Uh, yeah, winning 3-1 at home, we believe that uh, when we get there at least we can pick a point. But uh, getting there, is it was somehow stressful for us, so it's not that really easy for us to bring out our best. Um, it will really help us very, very well because um, we know it is going to be very difficult for us to meet an organized team like this in a Nigeria league. So having the kind of mentality of playing this kind of people in a league is going to be a total difference for us. So we are going to go all out on them, believing that oh, these people are not up to the people we play in Morocco. So it's going to help us. Quara United had a few days to you know to prepare for this uh, tournament. We did extremely well. Um, other factors are responsible for why we haven't progressed to the group stage, but we are not complaining. One day we'll get it to, uh, right in Africa. I cannot say more than that. But we'll discuss with the relevant authorities to see how we'll get ourselves out of this mess uh, that we face, especially the uh, Nigerian football team. All right, welcome back. <laughs> well, very painful uh, indeed for our Nigerian teams. They failed to conquer. They are now in the CAF Confederations Cup against another round of North African oppositions. Frank, I hope they will survive this time. They are going to Libya again. They are returning to North Africa. When you talk about survival, let us ask ourselves <laughs> why why did they fail to survive in uh, in Morocco? Morocco, I mean, very painful. And, and it, Tunisia. No, you, you you watch it to me. It was very disappointing. I know that uh, the Moroccans or the North Africans are very crafty when it comes to this game, but I think uh, you know something. Something's definitely wrong with Nigerian club side. I must tell you. What are those things that first, are wrong? First, first, <laughs> let's look at the issue of supportership. You know, okay. I was at Unicorn. I watched Kora United. That is the first of, leg. Yeah, the first leg, and uh, I could just barely count the number of spectators in that stadium. But look at what happened in South Africa. So we are talking about uh, refereeing, we are talking about officiating. What about our own supportership? You know, I think we have to re-examine our club management in this country, Tony. It's not just what happened on the pitch of play, it is what happened before matches are played. You know, North Africa have been dealing with us. They know the game, they know the art of the game before, mm -hmm. during, and after. But we have not learned our lessons. I've just mentioned the issue of uh, supportership. Even our coaching crew, you know, there's something to be done. You okay, can't go to North Africa. Frank, don't, don't, what, let me what, okay. don't let me finish. You can't go to North Africa and begin to defend one goal lead. It doesn't make sense to anybody. Because, you know, with a goal, then you are out of the game. Look at what Plato did, going there to defend. You know, and that is only what Rivers United were doing until they were hammered. I think uh, we need to examine our football, Tony. And that's what I think. What okay. I think. But, uh, gentlemen, one area that people complain so much debate was the officiating, especially as it affects Plateau United. Tony, do you think they were robbed? Yeah, George, um, when you talk about um, it's not for us. We have always been dwelling on uh, things that we do not have any control over. You know, but I think like Frank was just taking, Frank just, uh, you know, hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think that uh, administratively, you know, he has talked about it. We do not have, we do not get it right administratively. Mm -hmm. What the teams from North Africa, how they come, they get prepared. Even what they're going to eat, even arriving, they arrive on a jet. You know what special it, flight. You know what it is to fly. And of course, our teams have to go to North Africa to They have Europe. to go around, go around and around and around. And of course, it takes a toll on them. That's one. He talked about supportership. We do not, even coaching, we do not. It's, you don't just go and begin to defend. What are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? Look at now, our league is not on. We don't even know, we don't even have a date. North Africa, their league is almost about six weeks old. And here we are talking about when to start. If players does not gel or they are not jelly enough, when, how do you want them to produce results? All right, uh, let's now go over. Tony just talked about coaching, and uh, the man that did it for Inimba when he was in charge is our own Kadiri Ikana. We didn't have a foreign coach, and uh, uh, my producer is telling me now that uh, Ikana is ready to share his thoughts with us on the show. So that is a super exclusive for you. Uh, let's hear from Ikana how he did it with Inimba. Hello, Kadiri Ikana. How was your experience winning the Cup Champions League with Inimba back to back? For the first time, Nigeria won the Champions League. Definitely, I was the leader of that team as a coach. And um, so many things contributed into our winning the championship. First and foremost, let us say the league is, is well organized then. The country needed that club. And uh, mostly, most of the players there were dedicated to the job and also want to achieve something. Well, I think for now, our clubs are not ready to uh, play as a team, one, Two, 
We say because of the arrangement of the league, the organizer of the league, uh, there is no anything to compete for in terms of uh, either money or whatever. There's nothing to compete for at all. Then I think uh, when we won the league, there are so many things in place that uh, a player wants to achieve. Two seasons, three seasons, you see a player moving out, going abroad because uh, they are not well paid. And we are not taking, they were, they were not well taken care of in Nigeria, especially welfare in, in welfare. The welfare of the player is very poor, very, very poor. All right, coach, what can the current MPFL teams do to replicate same feet in the continent? If Edinburgh can do it, why can't our teams do it now? Getting it right is not something difficult as far as I'm concerned. It's just that uh, we must be upright. There's one thing the management of the team and the coaches fail to realize when they are grooming their team for a big tournament like this. First and foremost, I want to remind them that uh, they made different changes in the team. And maybe in about three to four years, they've been doing all these changes. So the only way for this team to play as a team to be well organized and to give them the maximum result they needed is these boys should at least be calm for between 15 days to two, two weeks or four weeks. They should be put together because, like I rightly said, that these players were selected from different clubs in the past three years. So they should know that these players are not one entity, which a team should be. If they do this, First and foremost, the players will recognize themselves very well. The coaches also will recognize the players very well. Then their game will get more improved. All right. Thank you, Coach Kadri Kana, for sharing your thoughts with us on the show today. We really appreciate this. Well, thanks for having me on this show. All right, Tony, you had a Kana there. <laughs> Yeah, George, uh, I had uh, Kana, and uh, of course, you talk about the Cup Champions League. You remember that uh, Kadri Rekana was the person, you know, that led him but to win the, you know, Cup Champions League. And of course, he knows. And uh, he had just said it pointedly, you know, that we do not have a league. And that's just a sad story. But that is the truth, very bitter truth, Kana has pointed out in this. Our league has always been an obstacle that... Uh, it does not fall, you know, fall in with the calendar of other leagues. So most of the times that we play, we play Cup Champions League. Our players are docile at home, and somehow it affects them. And we have equally talked about preparation. It kind of, if people or clubs are ready, these are the type of people that you borrow their experience. Bring a kind of when we have uh, continental outings, and then get to get share with their experience of how he did it. But we do not do this. Okay, thank you so much, uh, George, and uh, you know from. Uh, Kadre Kana, we also have uh, a referee that distinguished himself during his career. We're talking about uh, Emmanuel Imeri. Emmanuel Imeri, welcome to Sportsville. Thank you very much, too, for bringing on board. Okay, thank you. And, uh, you know, what do you make of uh, the penalty call against uh, Plateau United in the game against Esperance last weekend? It was a penalty. And, uh, like I say, like I, do, and I, told, like I told other people who called me before now, I told them that the ball is being played in faces. There were two incidents in that particular action. The first one was the tackle by the British United uh, defender with, using the leg, which he didn't make contact with, so no foul. But the second uh, contact, the second incident was the contact of the hand pushing the, the attacking player down to the ground, pushing him. So without pushing, and for the attacker going down, it's a penalty. And lastly, Nigerian referees are yet to be exposed to VAR. Does this in any way bother you? I'm highly concerned. I, I, I feel pained that with our continent globally, we're supposed, we we're, we're supposed to be the first set of people to be operating this VAR. It's unfortunate that our league is, 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 in a, is in, I will not say it's in a mess, but we don't have sponsors. We don't have uh, a TV uh, a broadcast. We, before you to have VAR, you must have a stable, stable broadcast of your big matches. And you need about at least 20, 20 to 22 cameras in the field. How many of our matches are being broadcast? None. So how do you market your league? Before, before of all, let us think of how to 
get the, the, the broadcast the link before we talk of VAR. Because if you don't, if you don't have those number of cameras, there's no way we can use VAR. And this 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 VAR is attached to the, the TV the broadcast. So it's from there. The, that's why when the light goes off, and again we need power, stable power supply for you to use the VAR. Because any moment there's no the reference to it, you take a lot of time. Not every it was now. If I say you need young, intelligent, well-educated referees and ICT compliance, because football has gone scientific. So you need people who can operate these gadgets. And it's not easy to just bring somebody from nowhere to hey, come and operate this uh, bar. It is not easy. Thank you so much uh, for speaking with us. Thank you very much too for bringing on board. Okay, Frank, that's uh you know, as an outstanding referee that you know very well, Emmanuel Emery, you, you know, talking to us. Tony when he was talking, see, <laughs> one thing about officiating, I try as much as possible to get myself out of it, okay? Because, uh, you know, when I was watching this match last weekend, a lot of people were saying, oh, we are robbed, we are this. But here you talk to a referee, you know, Emery is not just uh, uh, anybody referee. Yes. You know, a FIFA referee, well respected, you know, retired. And when he talks, people should listen. So you heard him say that uh, the, both, both calls were justified. Yes. You know, yes, but again, did. that does not run well with many Nigerians. Yes. Again, for us to avoid all this controversy, play good football. Play good football. Play the points of the game. All right, let's hope that Nigerian teams will get it right when it comes to the CAF Confederations Cup. And one man that uh, is trying to get it right is Julius Arawa, the one we call policeman. You remember him. He played very well for Nigeria in his heydays as a super ego striker. And uh, he will be live on Sportsville next week. Watch out for Julius Arawa. I hope you enjoy Sportsville. We'll be back after this break. All right, that's the show. I hope you have enjoyed Sportsville today. But don't forget that today is Super Sunday. Barcelona up against Athletic Club. That game comes up by 8 p.m. It's going to be a cracker. But if Barcelona we saw against Villarreal is anything to go by, then they may just take that game. That's the show. Thank you, Frank, for coming uh, and being part of Sportsville today. All right, we'll see you again next week. Have yours. And thank you, Tony Wokomo Bani, for being part of the show. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye and God bless.